Day 6. Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to day six here on the Regero Diodato theme week. I am your host, Moon616, and thank you once again for dropping in on this sixth day. <laughs> Alrighty guys, yeah, continue along with the uh, the theme week, Regero Diodato, and uh, ultimately switching subgenres of horror and genres in general. Uh, we continue along on that line. And today, this one is from 1977, and it is the uh, the first of, I believe, three cannibal flicks that Ruggiero Diodato made in his career. This one's actually the one that kind of started, you know, it for him and kind of his career. He kind of credits this film to kind of starting his career. And then, of course, he did Cannibal Holocaust about three years later, which ultimately halted his career for a few years until, like, the mid-'80s and stuff like that. But he gives this one... A lot of credit. It's one of his favorite films that he that he's directed because just because of the heart and soul that went into this film, especially with the filmmaking um, and stuff like that, which we'll get into. But 19, uh, 1977, and of course, this one is called Jungle Holocaust. Yeah, um, yeah, Jungle Holocaust. What can I say about this one? Starring uh, Massimo. Fossi, I always I butcher the hell out of this guy's name all the fucking time. Uh, he's the guy behind me. Um, of course, this one is all starring uh, Mimi Lei, who's in like tons of cannibal, like tons of Italian films and stuff. I I always remember her from Eating Alive, Umberto Lenzi's Eating Alive, and of course, this one also has Ivan Rossiman, who's in like a bunch. Sorry if I just butchered the shit out of those names, but you know how it goes. But yeah, Jungle Holocaust from 1977. Again, into the plot of this one, it basically starts out with uh, you know. Um, Massimo's character Robert Harper and he's in a he's like in a plane and they're doing basically uh, oil surveying um, they're supposedly over the the rainforest like in Papua New Guinea area and stuff like that even though this film was shot in Malaysia I believe um, but the setting is supposed to be Papua New Guinea anyways they're flying above the uh, you know the rainforest and whatnot and stuff and they're going there to meet some other surveyors and whatnot uh, they kind of they kind of come to a crash landing a little bit and um, they kind of get stuck, like, you know, in the jungle and whatnot. So there's four of them that, you know, ultimately land on the ground. Um, unfortunately, a couple of them succumb to, you know, some unseen forest circumstances <laughs> uh, and whatnot. And it leaves Robert and uh, his buddy, Rolf, you know, to basically survive in the jungle uh, because um, the plane is not really ready to go and whatnot and stuff. So anyways, they, uh, they try to escape, you know, the jungle, make their way out of there and whatnot. And unfortunately, Robert and, um, his partner, uh, Rolf, they actually get separated. Uh, they're like kind of rafting down this river and stuff like that. They get separated. And now Robert is basically on his own and trying to survive. And he's not very, you know, equipped and well adapted to like the, um, the rain or to, you know, the rainforest and stuff like that. His partner is, Fortunately, but he's not and of course he tried he's trying to survive um, He has some ups and downs, you know, he eats like some bad mushrooms. He has fucking major gets real sick and shit like that and unfortunately he runs into a cannibal tribe that actually abducts him and Ultimately locks him up, uh, you know at their place of living, you know Where the tribe resides and stuff like that and he does figure out exactly what they're doing They've got him locked him up. They've got him locked up in a cage and they're ultimately just waiting to like sacrifice him and stuff like that because you know he's seen what they've been doing to animals and whatnot. Um, fortunately, there is a female uh, native person there that um, actually kind of falls for him a little bit. She helps him escape it back into the uh, rainforest and whatnot. And now it's just basically just a struggle to survive um, the jungle, get out of there alive and whatnot. So that is your plot of Jungle Holocaust. Uh, now my thoughts on this one. I've always thought this movie was actually really, really well made. Uh, like Ruggiero Diodato says, um, it's one of his favorite films that he's ever done because of the way it was you know, shot and the location. Uh, he said this was a really torturous shoot, especially for everybody. You know, himself, the actors. Everything involved with this one was real tough because, of course, the location being way, way deep in the, 
you know, into the Malaysia rainforest and stuff like that. But, you know, all the obstacles, obstacles you really have to, you know, divert from in real life, like, you know, animals and, you know, just everything around. He said the craziest thing about filming this film is the fact that it was, you know, a six hour canoe ride into the shooting locations and stuff, which takes a lot out of you and stuff. Um, you know, of course, uh, Massimo, he's actually naked in a good portion of this film too, which is interesting. You know, you're in the, you're in the rainforest naked, just real tough, man, real tough job and stuff like that. He even, he even goes on to joke about how you, they don't make actors like this anymore because, you know, actors are generally scared of the outdoors and this is like real crazy outdoor shit, man. Like you could probably die in filmmaking of this. Um, so yeah, like the setting, awesome, awesome cinematography in this, some really cool overhead shots. It really does capture the rainforest and, you know, that kind of life. Uh, the other really cool thing is that he used the real natives, actually, that, you know, that live there and stuff, which is really cool, man. I really respect that. Uh, I take a big chance doing that, obviously a language barrier and whatnot, but um, it worked out. You know, I thought they did a really good job. Of course, this film isn't without its you know, it's staple Italian, you know, animal killings and stuff like that. Of course, they're in here. He, Ruggiero Diodato even says before the beginning of the film that he did not shoot these ones. Uh, the producer actually shot these scenes and put them into the film, um, even though he didn't want them in there and stuff like that, which is kind of whatever. You know, some of the scenes are, you can totally tell they're just, they're kind of offbeat in the film too. They're just totally thrown in. They don't need to be there at all. But unfortunately, they are, so you get to see some real animal killings, which is, yeah, I've seen enough in my day, but... It still does disturb me a little bit. Um, but yeah, overall, this is a fun film. There's some pretty nasty gore in this. Uh, some really good killings, actually. I really like. And uh, yeah, I don't know, man. It just has that really kind of torturous, cannibalistic survival feel to the film. I really enjoy this one, man. I, I just couldn't imagine being stuck in this guy's position out in the rainforest trying to survive. You're being hunted down by a cannibalistic tribe. And you got to escape all types of obstacles, Mo you know, mostly, you know, everything that's in your way, like snakes and poisonous spite, like everything, you know, it's just, it'd be a rough fucking go. But yeah, I really like this film, man. Um, some really great gore, I gotta say. Some good cannibalistic moments, which are fucking fantastic. Uh, pretty cool score. I kind of like the score in this film too. Um, but it's more about the setting and just the whole survival. It's, it's very scary in itself and stuff like that but you know there's not a lot of characters in this one it's basically you know him who ends up actually meeting up with Rolf again later on in the film and as they try to escape which is kind of cool that you know that they did that in the film and uh yeah um but not really a whole lot to say about it man if you've seen this one you know exactly what uh you know what I'm talking about it's a good film it's a really good film I really highly recommend this one but uh you know I, I kind of wish at times that there was a little more cannibal action in this, but uh, what you get is pretty gnarly, um, especially with the, the second body that gets eaten. <laughs> this one is pretty fucking gnarly, but uh, yeah, overall, really fun film, man. I highly recommend Jungle Holocaust, man. Definitely a fun flick. Uh, if I had to rate this one, I'd just give it like a 7 out of 10, you know, just like kind of seems to be the rating of the week. You know, nothing spectacular, nothing too bad, but definitely recommendable, and uh, yeah, really, really awesome flick. Um, yeah, I just, I couldn't imagine filming this one, man, just naked in the in the rainforest, it's fucking brutal, but anyways, Jungle Holocaust, not really a whole lot to say about this one, but I really do recommend this one, I think it's a fun film. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for weeks, or to, for day six here on the Reguero Diodato theme week. Uh, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow with the finale, so stay tuned for that, and it's actually, uh, it's going to be a good one, it's a first time watch for me, and I've, I'm just, I've been so looking forward to checking this one out, man, it just, the premise is awesome, but anyways, guys, that's going to do it, and of course, peace out.